this series, I'm investigating layers of Mexican culture and the importance of preserving them as a first-generation Mexican-American. To do this, I've been taking time to interview native-born Mexicans in my family, including my elders, and researching cultural traditions slash events. Doing this allows me to understand their impact so one day I can pass it down to the next generation, but I also aim to educate others about my heritage as well. This led me to question what parts of Mexican culture can and should be highlighted. Without the knowledge of these more obscure aspects and why they're important, they will be lost to time and can never be passed down. My first pieces, numbers 2, 3, and 4, touch on more well-known subjects in order to gradually shift into lesser-known parts of the culture, such as 6, 8, 10, 13, 14, and 15. With this series, I want to explore the lively, spirited nature that is deeply ingrained in Mexico's roots, and immerse others in it using vibrant colors and contrast throughout pieces like number 8. Through this series, I am investigating the negative effects of fast fashion. Fast fashion companies purposely use low-quality materials so that clothing must be replaced quicker than in past decades. This allows manufacturers to produce larger volumes and increase profits. This also ensures repeat customers who do not realize the long-term costs that result from cheap prices. Factory workers must deal with grueling work conditions and low wages. The fast fashion industry is one of the leading sources of air and water pollution as well. I explore these ideas through the portrayal of the hardships of factory workers, waste of natural resources, and effects of pollution. I experimented with the integration of various fabrics and threads into my watercolor paintings. In my first image, I sewed pink threads into the paper to show how fast fashion seeps water from our natural resources to produce clothing. I made the foreground sharper than the background to create a sense of depth. In my seventh image, I sewed green thread into the smoke to show how poor working conditions are poisoning clothing factory workers. I used a variety of warm and cool tones to create greater contrast. I wanted to investigate the dynamic visual beauty, camaraderie, romanticism, and harmony that music brings to our lives. Music is conveyed using rhythm, tempo, tone, harmony, and instrumentation, but it is far more than that. Music is art, a window to one's soul through sound. I use dynamic perspectives to capture the glimmer of the instrument's beauty. I also added sheet music from famous late romantic and early modern eras I have played in the orchestra before. Pieces 9 and 10 show the camaraderie and band activities, activities where I immortalized marches with their instruments and one color guard member. I interviewed people to learn how others are also enamored by music, leading to piece 12, showcasing the professionalism of street music and the beauty of it that captures our hearts. Piece 4 shows the romanticism of a conductor guiding and being guided by musicians around the world. The feelings you get playing and listening to music, being with others passionate about music, the incessant practice that goes into a performance, and the roar of applause afterwards. That is what I wish and hope to immortalize through my art showcasing the beauty of instruments. How can I portray discomfort as something that promotes self-development? In this investigation, I illustrate several people's uncomfortable experiences and how they dealt with them. At first, I focused solely on my own life and depicted myself as the subject matter, as in images 2, 4, and 5. However, I soon realized that incorporating the stories of others would lend my series credibility, variety, and interest. Through a survey, I asked responders to relate personal stories and what they learned from them, displayed in image 1. Each piece was built from a response, and each one required specific background research. For example, image 15 involved foster teen adoption so I researched the experiences of foster parents. 
I also chose the most fitting composition, medium, and color palette for the unique tone and subject of each response. In image 15, harsh, gritty colored pencil symbolizes a mother's pain over the departure of her adopted son. Bright, golden hues express the self-awareness she gained as well. Over time, my process formalized into research, sketching, color testing, then execution, as in images 9, 11, 13, and 15, though I also experimented with technique as in image 6. explored the political connections to climate change and asked the question, what are people in power doing to heal the earth before it is too late? Within 50 years, it is believed that pond frogs could go extinct due to a deadly disease that has formed by the warming of the earth. This statistic inspired a series of pieces. One is a sculpture of a pond frog, and another being a snake that is attacking a small frog. The extinction of frogs could impact other species, such as snakes. I used sculpting and coil methods and decided to incorporate foreign materials to bring this issue to life and connect it back to my investigative question. Another piece is based on the California wildfires, which is a big issue. Here I used slab construction, being sure to layer on pieces. The now former president, Donald Trump, is a focus because he had a responsibility to help protect the earth and there are few acts in place to do so, even some that have been removed. I portrayed this through my elephant piece built by sculpture. The president is represented by the elephant stranded on an iceberg, finding itself stuck before anything could be fixed. Scuba diving has given me the amazing experience of personally viewing coral reefs and witnessing concerning issues. Coral reefs are dying. 
I am investigating the causes including pollution and global warming while also investigating effects such as coral bleaching, effects on other species, and even disappearance. Using vibrant colors, I brought the, out the life and the beauty of the reefs in their glory. This was used in piece number 11, where the entire base of the reef is in the shape of two hands holding up the reef. I wanted to emphasize the natural beauty of the reefs by incorporating the vibrant colors and intense lighting effects. It was also my goal to show that the life of the ecosystem lies within the hands of the people around the world. In contrast, I used different values to show how, what reefs could look like in the future. This was used in piece 10, where I created a drawing of a dead reef with a skull silhouette in the background. By using darker values of greens, blues, and more, it was, I was able to create an eerie feeling. I was also able to emphasize the idea that death is looming over reefs. This piece was meant to help people understand how severe this issue can be if we do not change. The series investigates what roles peers play in helping to reduce anxiety. I wrote and illustrated a story that depicts a series of characters that form a game club after school. Throughout my story, they learn how to work together to overcome their issues. In piece 12, my characters are at a fictional restaurant and help push my main character, Sheldon, who struggles with social anxiety, to overcome his fear of ordering food. Through facial expressions, gestural poses, and darker colors, the piece conveys the feeling of anxiety and awkwardness he feels while facing his anxiety. In piece 10, they confront school bullies and must overcome their fears and stand up for one another. I used shape language to design the bully characters by using their sharper shapes to make them seem more interesting, contrasted to the main character's rounder designs, which makes them seem more friendly.
A major problem that has survived through years of progression is racial inequality and mockery through cultural appropriation. My portfolio is meant to express how a culture's traditions are not for consumption and exploitation. I came to this topic while researching non-Abrahamic religions, mostly Native and African spirituality. My pieces are meant to depict racial and cultural inequality, though I gradually branched out to wider issues than just appropriation. I show spirits that pre represent the consequences of ignorance of cultural injustice in society, such as appropriation in the fashion industry, Halloween costumes, and cultural, spiritual, and religious close practices. In piece four, I express how fake native costumes can have consequences to a culture's spiritual significance. I also strive to teach methods of cultural appreciation and open discussions on racial inequality. Choosing the right colors for my topic was one issue I had while working. Watercolor is good for vivid colors, but I meant to use them in a darker manner by using gray and blue tones in my art to emphasize a mystical aspect but also relate to my investigation since the topic I chose is more serious. impacts do unhealthy relationships have on people? Between friends, family, significant others, and ourselves, life revolves around the relationships we have with people. From an early age, we are taught to love one another, we are taught to love our parents. Through my experiences in life, I've seen that it is easy to become trapped as a victim of emotional harm in a relationship from lack of understanding toxic traits. This toxicity affects people beyond a single relationship. It impacts how a person manages themselves and interacts with others. I believe this is an important issue to shed light on because it affects everyone in subtle and drastic ways in friendships, significant others, marriages, and family. I explored different elements including the use of shadows to create dramatic atmosphere and depth as seen in these 1, 4, 5, and 12. I also use minimalism and lack of saturation in all my pieces to give a collective mood throughout my portfolio. My purpose is to give people a sense of empowerment to face the problems in their relationships and to break the cycle of toxicity. sustained investigation, I explored the effects heteronormativity has on LGBT youth. I wrote and illustrated a comic style story that follows two girls as they fail to realize they are each other's soulmates because they never knew two girls could be together. Lack of LGBT representation is harmful. I spent half of my life sheltered from my identity, having not been exposed to varying sexualities. In middle school, I began to educate myself with help from social media and the very few pieces of entertainment media that I found that depicted gay romances. 
The characters in this story, Aurora and Evelyn, are faced with similar burdens. They embark on a journey to find their soulmates in Peace 3, seeking a city of people who've never met theirs. When they arrive in Peace 9, they find the inhabitants to appear old, yet are younger than the protagonists, meaning they've, they've found their soulmates already. This moment of realization in Peace 10 is followed by a vibrant depiction of soulmates in warm colors, contrary to the co cool palette used previously to show heterosexual couples. This difference in tone shows the clarity that acceptance brings after a life of heteronormativity. The modern day political system has established itself full of biases and pressuring environments for America's youth. How do children coming of age find themselves politically in the United States, and what obstacles are they faced with? How does pressures from parents' views influence their children, pressuring with what they believe to be correct without letting the child for themselves in political matters? A New York Times article describes how parents have become gatekeepers to their children's political beliefs, leaving their children feeling trapped and almost forced to agree with their parents. Each generation brought new ways of thinking. However, there are people in all generations holding opposite views. Dominant news outlets and social media perpetrates certain ideas through propaganda containing biased information. These ideas are being pushed onto the easily persuaded youth rather than letting them decide on political matters for themselves. I attempted to display this through a dramatic contrast in colors, as well as in line weight within watercolor paintings. I created many collages as seen in piece 11 displaying overwhelming information that one may see through media.
This series explores my journey as a first-generation Mexican-American woman, how it shaped me as a person, how it leads me to overcome life's challenges. Many of my pieces are paired to illustrate traditional values and more modern ways of thinking, like 9 and 10. On one hand, I demonstrate moments in my childhood where I have been exposed to certain ways of thinking stemming from past generations. These beliefs are passed on subconsciously to younger generations. Acknowledging these old belief systems encourage you to act in accordance with what is aligned with you. As in other pieces, I demonstrate the effect of bringing awareness and change to these situations. I show this contrast by emphasizing shadows, use of angles, and color. My intent is to share and relate with others, as well as to empower women. I use many mediums to portray the message I'd like to share surrounding how I feel, so we can have a healthy conversation and bring awareness to these issues. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, about 40 million adults are affected by anxiety disorders in the U.S. alone. Anxiety is in all of us, whether it's taking a test, giving a speech, or preparing for a big job interview. We all experience anxiety in different ways. But what does anxiety feel like, and how can we cope with it? The series investigates how people with anxiety feel and how they can cope with it. This topic is important to me because I have anxiety, and I want to spread awareness of this mental disorder and how it can impact someone's life. I chose to desaturate my pieces to represent how anxiety can be draining and can take away from a person's energy or personality. I also wanted to share how people with anxiety use different activities to help them feel less anxious. An example of this is using music to help cope with anxiety, shown in piece 10, or going to a safe space, shown in piece 15. Anxiety can be a burden on a person's life, but there are ways to take steps towards becoming more comfortable in anxious situations. One just needs to be willing to try and put themselves in those situations, even if it is only for a little bit.
I have many fears and phobias I deal with in day-to-day -day life. With this series, I investigated the flood of emotion and altered perceptions people experience when encountering their fears, as well as give ways to face them. The first three images are me exploring the ideas of fear while still figuring out my investigation inquiry. The mood board shows reactions to fear, and piece number three is my take on the essence of fear. Images four through seven depict struggles with phobias and distorted perceptions from the irrationality of fears. For example, piece five. Roller coasters, insects, public speaking, and falling behind are common fears most people have. Through combining different mediums, color schemes, and working with limited palettes, I feel I captured the feelings justly. Works 8 through 15 depict ways to face fears. Number 8, fear of loneliness, for example, pushes the message that even when you feel most alone, you can still reach out to loved ones through things like the internet. Now that the series is done, I hope it reaches people with these fears and motivates them to take back control.